but like most things I love, including myself, that love comes with very intense criticism. I remember talking to Leroy Walker and he talked about taking uh, the foam dumbbells in the pool and doing like water aerobics on his off days to help circulate blood. And he's got like the powerlifting tuck. Elbows are down and in. He's leaning back, hitting low on the chest. I feel like there's five different bodybuilding violations going on here. Things like spot presses always get me thinking about optimal developmental ranges. They fixate a lot on like range of motion, like what's better in every situation. Going all the way down, stopping, is it variety, is it relative to the person, who the fuck knows? Because as much as we talk about stretching a muscle all the way to the extreme for more hypertrophy, from a strength standpoint, it stands to reason that it's more the rate of development, how much you improve on your baseline, assuming that you're in some proximal range. Like obviously a quarter squat, you can improve by a thousand pounds. That's not gonna carry over to your full range really in any significant capacity. But when we're talking about a deficit deadlift to a regular floor deadlift to a, a two inch elevation, those are all pretty similar. And if somebody spends their entire life deadlifting from 11 inches instead of nine inches, which is where a barbell rides about on standard plates or Olympic plates, then what can we say as far as how much or how little muscle or strength they'll have compared to somebody who goes a bit lower? Would you say that somebody that deadlifts from like a four inch deficit is going to be stronger, going to be more developed, going to have more muscle than the other person? It seems silly. It seems very proportionate to the growth. And then again, the important thing everybody forgets, diminished returns come for fucking everybody. It doesn't matter what you do. If you have something that kind of looks like a static training program, similar movements, similar volumes, similar patterns of progression, growth goes like this. That's why we have so much content. It's how do you keep going when your body doesn't want to grow anymore? So you're never going to outsmart the need for novelty. And with something like this, I mean, I'm going a bit wider and I'm stopping, you know, a little short for my chest. And I used to talk shit. I was like 14 telling like 500 pound benchers like, oh, you're not touching your chest. What's the point? And there was some guy that just looked at me. He's like, have you ever tried it? And I'm like, no. And he's like, well, try it. It's pretty hard. And I tried it. It was pretty hard. So and now I keep that in my back pocket. If I stay away from this for very long, it gets pretty fucking hard. And when I start doing it again, it gets easier. And that represents some type of local short-term adaptation that I can use as part of a bigger package. So I look at it as a quilt. It's like one of those pictures that's made up of little pictures. We collect these little uh, moments in time of workouts to get this shade, but eventually we're gonna have to move on. And over time we get this very kind of complex pixelated thing that starts to take shape long-term. That's what training is. So these dumbass questions, like we're ever gonna be in a situation where we just have to pick one. There's a reason the exercise science guys don't just do the one exercise. Israel doesn't just do myo reps. If they worked the way he thought they did, he would do nothing but myo reps. So uh, everybody's hedging their bets. That's my fucking rant about that. All that monologuing. Branch Warren's done like five workouts and I'm still fucking around in my third exercise. By the way, guys, I'm not even gonna do a barbell apparel pitch about the Bromley gear because this shit sells itself. You can't be afraid to look weak in your programs. I don't even think twice about it. There was a time where I wanted to be as fresh as possible. And that's one of the reasons I would cut my sets down when I was younger. Uh, why I'd skip arm day, because I know I was going to be benching in a couple of days. I didn't want to be sore. There's a balance in all of training. It's never one or the other, where it's just refining strength-specific qualities by being fresh and pushing up against the heaviest weights when you are fresh versus doing something that's just stimulating where it doesn't really matter how fatigued you are. That's what bodybuilders do, or it's just hypertrophy work. You're just trying to get the stress in to cause you to grow. We get a little bit of both. I mean, this is a compound pressing movement. We can handle more weight. The pattern is pretty comparable to other pressing movements I'm gonna do. It carries over very nicely. But the competition bench setup, the wide grip spot pressing, those were heavier variations. At this point, I'm fatigued. This is a very weak variation. It's a different movement pattern. Didn't really warm up that well for us. It's a little awkward on the first set, but it doesn't really matter because at this point, the fatigue is set into the point where I'm stimulating. That's it, I'm getting my work in. I'm still trying to stay in the pocket, still trying to practice good habits, but the weight's gotta come down. I'm not worried about getting the heaviest weight I can. That's not what we're doing here. 
we're building capacity. Some of it's going to be skill, strength development, neurological, you know, refining the stroke, getting volume around certain weights. A lot of it's not going to be. It's just what it is. I wish I had a clear flow chart to give you guys about how much is enough, but all I can say is that we are way, way, way far away from the peak. This is volume, hypertrophy, off-season, base building, whatever the fuck you want to call it. We were going from like five and six sets of 10 to like five and six sets of eight. We got a while before we're in triples, doubles, and singles. And the more I can flesh this out, the more size I can gain, the better my capacity is, the better I'm going to be. And I'm not going to shy away from movements that I know are going to hit those weak points, add some mass where I need it. Close grip incline, great for getting this joint to do its job better. More meat on the tricep, incline press, a lot of range of motion. There's a really good stretch at the bottom. And I feel that as I come in, as I pull down, I feel that stretch all the way through my elbows, but it's a long range. And the triceps, they do a bit. I mean, even if it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of shoulder movement to get it going, the triceps do a bit to hold on to that elbow position, but you feel when they have to come through at the top, it's exaggerated. So I'm a fan of this as a tricep builder. The fact is, if I wanted you absolutely fresh for all three sets of barbell exercises, I wouldn't have fucking programmed it like this. 